Have you ever wanted to take a picture of your subject and have the background zoom by? Well, today we're gonna to show you how to do this very easily in Photoshop. Hey there and welcome to Florin. My name is Aaron Nace. Today we've got two great examples for you. Let's go ahead and jump in and show you how it's done. So we're gonna start off with this image. It's kind of simple because everything's just going left to right. So let's hit F for full screen and go ahead and zoom in. Now our first step, go ahead and select on your background layer and we're gonna go to where it says select subject. So let's go ahead and select our subject out. You can see the subject has been selected, perfect. Now, what we're gonna do is take our background layer, we're gonna click and drag it down to the new layer icon, just this little plus icon, boom, it's going to create a copy of the background. And now we still have our selection active. So what we're gonna do is click here on the layer mask icon. There we go. So what that does basically is it basically cuts out your subject and puts them on a new layer. You just wanna make sure you edit this a little bit. So let's go ahead and use our brush tool. We're gonna hit B for the brush tool. And then I'm just gonna paint black with my brush tool just to make sure that anything that is not the actual subject goes away, right? This is, you know, we don't wanna blur these areas. Well, we do actually wanna blur these areas. We wanna make sure our subject stays intact. Okay, so you can just go in here, refine your layer mask. Shouldn't take too long. Let's go ahead and just paint away whatever that is as well. Now we're using a layer mask, so if it's not perfect at this stage, it's not a big deal. Okay, now the next thing what we're gonna do is basically I need to go back to my original image and completely remove my subject from this photo so I can blur the background without the subject in it. So how do we completely remove that subject? We're gonna use generative fill. So to start off with, remember we made this background copy already? We're gonna go ahead and turn this into a selection. So if you wanna turn your layer mask into a selection, just hold Control or Command and click on that and you can see it goes ahead and makes that a selection. Now, let's make this selection a little bit bigger. We're gonna go up here to where it says select, and then down here to modify, and over to expand. There we go. Expand, and we're gonna say 30 pixels, and hit okay. There we go. So now you can see the selection is a little bit bigger. It's just encompassing more than my subject, so I'm gonna be like really, really sure that it is in fact going to cut my entire subject out from this image. Okay, really good. Now let's go ahead and make this layer invisible with just the horse, we'll, we'll just call this subject. There we go. And we're gonna click here on our background layer. So the background layer, but keep in mind, the selection is still active. It's just a little bit bigger than our subject. Now, what we're gonna do is click right here on generative fill. You don't have to type in anything, just click on generate. And as you can see, this is gonna generate here for us boop, 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 using the magic of AI, and it's gonna automatically just remove the horse. And you have a couple different options you can choose from. This looks pretty good. Okay, so now what we have is a background layer, a generative fill layer where it completely removed the horse, and then we have our subject. So what we're gonna do, we wanna make one more layer. Let's go ahead and click on this plus icon right down there. One more layer, and this is basically gonna be a combo layer of the two layers underneath it. So how do we do that? Well, just make sure the horse is invisible. We wanna basically create this layer as an apply image to apply everything we see. So we go to image right up here at the very top, go down to where it says apply image. There we go. Use all the default, default, default settings. Layers should be merged, channels, RGB, all that looks good. Just hit okay right here. And this basically creates a snapshot of everything you see and it just puts it on a new layer. That's perfect. Now we're ready to make our subject back visible again. So what we have here is a really great setup. Basically, we have a background in one layer, okay, without the horse, and then we have our subject right above it. So we're at a perfect setup. Basically, we have our subject on their own layer and the background on its own layer, and we're ready to apply that blur to the background. Now, before we apply that blur, we wanna make sure we change this layer into a smart object. That way, it's going to allow us to change that blur at any time. So let's make sure we click on this layer here. Cool, we're gonna go to layer, down to smart objects, and we're gonna go to convert to smart object. There we go. And as you can see, it has a little smart object icon there, letting us know that it is in fact a smart object. So now we're ready to actually apply the blur. So again, just make sure you're clicked on this layer. We're gonna go to filter. We're gonna go down to where it says blur gallery, and we're gonna go to a path blur, path blur. 
Now, with this path blur, you basically have a couple different controls you can choose from. You can choose that back. You can choose the middle, which will create an arc if you want to. In this case, we're not going to use that. And you can control the front. So I'm basically just choosing the path that the blur is going to go on. And then here on the right-hand side, I have a speed. So I can change the speed of the blur. There we go. And as we can see, the horse stays still. And we're able to apply this blur. That looks really, really good. We see it in real time because the horse is on a layer right over top of it. Let's go ahead and hit OK right here at the very top. Boom. And here is our speed effect. Now, the cool thing about this is I can turn this because, remember, we made a smart object first. I can turn this smart filter off and on at any time. So I can add that blur or take that blur away. And if I want to, I can double click right here where it says blur gallery. And I can even change this blur amount at any time. Just hit OK. There we go. And it's going to automatically update to this image. Super, super cool. Okay, so this was a pretty simple blur. We're just going one direction, like the band. <laughs> Next example, we're going to actually show you how to create a blur using multiple different paths, and that's going to be for a car. All right, here's our second image. So we're starting the same way we did before. We're going to go right up to select subject. Boom, it selected our subject. Looks pretty good. Now, keep in mind, we're going to use our layer mask. So what we want to do is we're going to take our background, click and drag that background to the plus icon here. There we have a background copy and then click here on the layer mask. There we go. There we go. Let's make our background invisible. I'm going to use my brush tool to just paint away anything that's not like considered the car and the car shadow. We want to be in there too, by the way, just a heads up. So we want to make sure that we include the shadow in there. Fantastic. And just kind of like blur out the road right next to it. All right. There we go. Looking really good. All right, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Keep in mind, we're using layer masks, so you can literally change this at any time. All right, let's use our brush tool. I'm just going to go in and make, like if I zoom in, you can see it, it was just a little bit like uh, undefined up at the very top of the car. So we're just going to go in and kind of define this just a little bit better, and I'm just using my brush tool to do this. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I just want it to be like a little bit better than, you know, than what we got. And it really depends. Sometimes, you know, your subjects are going to get like really, really easily selected with select subject, uh, depending on the background. Uh, sometimes it's not going to be as good. And if this is professional level work, like sometimes we just want to get something done. Right. Um, and then other times it's like you're being hired and you got to do a professional level job. If this is like a professional level work, you could use, for instance, like the pen tool to go in there and like really make a perfect selection of your subject. There we go. All right. Fantastic. I'm just kind of filling this in. And then a little help. If you hit R for the rotate tool and you need to like paint in an area, it can really help to like paint that area in with your canvas rotated. That way you have a little bit more of like a natural, there we go, like a natural angle to paint rather than trying to paint in like some weird way. Hit R and rotate your canvas back and you're good to go. Okay, that looks pretty decent. It's not perfect. Again, for a professional job, I recommend using the pen tool and accur like accurately tracing it out, but you're going to see it's going to look great. Okay, so everything looks really good. Now, we're going to go ahead and make this selection. Control or Command, click on the layer mask. Again, remember we've selected the layer mask. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to expand it. So let's go up here to Select. We're going to go to Modify right there. We're going to go to expand. There we go. 30 pixels is perfect. Let's hit OK. Let's go ahead and click our background layer. And then there we go. You know what? I'm going to hit L for our lasso tool just to make sure we expand right over top of that too. Perfect. So we have our selection. We have our background layer. We're going to go to generative fill. Let's go ahead and generate. Boom. This is just getting rid of this car in the background because we don't want it there in the zoom. Basically, that's that's the goal there, right? Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, what we're going to do, create a new layer right here. Go to image, down to apply image. There we go. All the default settings look good. Hit OK. And then here we go. Pop our car right back on top of that. Perfect. And you, like, I didn't get the, like, rear view mirror in the car in the original one. That's not a big deal. Remember, because we're using a layer mask here, so I can just paint it back if I need to. Okay, so now we're ready for that blur. Again, we're going to go to layer. 
down to smart objects over to convert to smart object. Perfect. And now we're ready for that blur effect. So let's go to filter. We're going to go to blur gallery and over to path blur. Fantastic. So now you can see this like start point. We're going to move over there and we're going to move this arrow in the direction of the blur. So there we go. Let's go ahead and put that there. Now, this is kind of cool because this is the blur that we want. You know, this is the direction that we want the blur to go to from, you know, from the top of the car. But from the bottom of the car, I want it to go in this direction. I want like those lines to kind of converge, right? So we're going to click here and then click here on the bottom. There we go. And then hit escape to go ahead and finish this off. And now look at this. This blur is actually going to be coming from multiple different directions. So they're both kind of coming to blur. There we go. And even if you want to, you can even add another blur. Like, there we go. Oh, let's go ahead and pull that back. And then there we go. Make it look like it's kind of like blurring around the corner there. See, if you grab this middle area, it's going to be on any one of these. So if you click here, you can see this middle area. That's going to get you some curves if you want. You don't need that, but I just wanted to kind of make it look like, yeah, it's going and curving around the, you know, whoosh. <laughs> I don't know that that's realistic. You can click on that and then just hit the delete key and then uh, you can just delete it. All right. So let's just hit delete and delete that one. But basically, you can see here that I'm able to bring this curve in going this way. Fantastic. There we go. And I can even change the velocity, the endpoint speed here as well. So if I wanted to kind of like uh, slow down towards the end, we can do that, which is actually what we want to do. Again, just click on your little curve. You can use here endpoint speed, this little cursor, or you can use this little curve here. And that's kind of what we want, right? We want it to kind of slow down as it gets closer. But then here, the beginning point speed, we want this to kind of speed up a little bit. See how we're taking what we did before and kind of going a little bit more advanced with it? There we go. Fantastic. So we're basically speeding from two different directions here now, right? We've got, there we go. I want to make sure this road speeds like we're following the direction. There we go. Let's bring that up. Following the direction of the road and then following this out there. And it terminates really nicely as well. So just go ahead and click on there. You can do your endpoint speed if you want. Um, and you can even taper this curve as well, okay? So it's going to put more on one side and less on the other side. But I think this looks really good. I think that addition that we did at the end of the endpoint speeds looks fantastic. And here we go. So we're ready. Let's click on OK. And there's our effect in final. So there's basically the before and after. You can see it's a big, big, big change. And don't forget at any time, literally, because we made it a smart filter, you can go to your blur gallery, double click there, and you can just decide, yeah, you know what, maybe we don't need that much speed. Maybe we're going to lower our speed down a little bit. Let's click on this one, lower our speed down a little bit. There we go. Just make it a little bit. It's not going quite as fast. There we go. Hit OK, and it's going to automatically update. So there we go. That's how to make that speed effect in Photoshop using two different images. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up here on YouTube. And if you want to get more free tutorials, click on subscribe. Thanks so much. I'll learn you later. Bye, everyone.